Hello friends and welcome back to my channel and welcome back for another episode of 6x6 Fix which is also morphing into minimal mixed media today because I have a very fun technique to show you guys that I don't think we often think of but be sure to check out Crafty Meggie's channel down below to check out her recent videos. She won't be participating in 6x6 Fix today but hopefully later this week she will be sharing some more ideas on her channel. Before today I am using my How to Kill a Kit with Style for the month of October which I have had a blast with so far and this actually is some really old papers. I have this polka dot paper, which is just a random one from my stash. I have no idea where it came from. And then I have this beautiful red and blue striped paper, which came from a Recollections travel paper pad. And I'm using them in conjunction to sort of, it looks like a barbershop look almost, you know, those red, blue, and white themes that are typically in the cartoons for a barbershop, but it's a lighter blue. So it does give it a different vibe. And I have two photos for today. And these two photos are actually from a sort of solo universal trip I took a couple months ago, back pre-pandemic. I think this was the last time I went to Universal, actually, before everything shut down and before things got too crazy. But those are the two photos here. So I have a picture of near the entrance, and then I have my ice cream that I got that day. Because um, if, you're, if you're going alone, you gotta eat something yummy. So I went for ice cream. Now I will say the technique for today's minimal mixed media can be a little bit intimidating and you'll see that I actually go through a ton of embellishments because I'm trying to figure out the total layout for this page before I commit to where my mixed media is going to be, which is often something I do because I get so nervous about mixed media or wasting my time or wasting product by putting it somewhere it doesn't really need to be. But here I start dipping into my 6x6 paper pads, which are actually outside of my kit, but sometimes you gotta work with what you got. And I end up pulling out one sheet from the Doodlebug Americana collection, which is just their 4th of July patriotic collection. And then this Fancy Pants Take Note 6x6 really inspires me. I pull out these two pieces of red. So one is 6x6, one is a scrap. So it's a little bit less than six inches wide. And then I find these composition notebook pieces. And again, I have that notebook style paper on the left from the Doodlebug collection. And I end up coming up with this school themed for a non-school themed layout. Hence the title of this video, you guys can probably already put two and two together. But I am going to use these six by six papers in a unique way to create almost all of my layers underneath my photos. And something I think we often forget about with six by six papers is that they can be cut in half and extended. And what I mean by that is I have two small scraps of that composition notebook black and white paper. And the way I'm going to put them underneath my layers and my photos will make it look like it's one long piece underneath all of that. So it gives the illusion of a full layer when it's only two small pieces of paper. But before I glue any of that down, I wanted to get my mixed media in place. So I pull out this large stencil and I don't have too many of these large shaped stencils, but this one's from Heidi Swap. And I am going to use my Heidi Swap gold metallic color paste in here. And if you're using a large frame stencil like this, Oftentimes you're gonna want a larger palette knife. And while I didn't have that, I did consider substituting it with a piece of paper could work, you know, something that's thick that is long enough to drag across. And I'm overall, I'm happy with the results I could achieve with my small palette knife. And you'll notice I didn't fill in the rest of the star and that's because the majority of it will be covered up. But if you have to force yourself to work with a smaller palette knife like I had, just make sure you take it easy. You don't want a ton of pressure because then you'll get dips in your design. And while I do end up having those dips, I don't think it really matters to the end result of the page. You still get the star. You can still tell it's a star and it still works really well. So now I'm going to take some of the awesome papers from that fancy pants paper pad and layer them under my photos. Then I go back to my kit and grab the six by six paper pad that's in my kit, which is this Pebbles you know, Valentine's Day collection called Truly Yours and start layering a couple under there to get that accent of red yet again because I know it's in the background and for the layers I've chosen for underneath the photos. So after I let my mixed media dry and that took quite a while because it was such a large spot and it did warp the paper slightly but since I'd already glued two pieces together I think that really helped kind of keep it down in terms of the warping and bubbling. And now I'm just going to layer together all of my elements and again, you don't necessarily need a full six by six paper or anything larger to create a layer for your photo. So you'll see here, I'm just putting two random strips 
similarly across from each other. And no, they're not exactly straight because I used my arm instead of my T-square ruler. But you can get the gist that you can pull off so many different layer types while not necessarily having to have a 12 by 12 inch piece of paper to cover a lot of room or a lot of square footage. But now to build out my clusters, I pulled out a Jen Hadfield striped washi tape strip that I put above my layout there so I could rip off pieces of it. Because when you have these washi strip booklets, I think we often forget that you don't necessarily have to use it in a full 12 inch piece. So you'll see me tearing off pieces and pairing that with a red washi tape that I've had in my stash, which is actually from just the 33 cent washi tape at Michael's bin. Um, a really fun bin to go through, but a lot of the washi tapes don't change. Um, so once you've been in it once and picked out your favorites, you're not going to want to look again for quite some time. At least that's my experience with it. Next up, I'm working on a cluster in the bottom right. I do have a flare there, and that is from the Crafty Pocket, now known as Humble and Create. And it says eat more ice cream, which is ideally my life motto. And so I thought it'd go great with this ice cream photo because I had been hoarding that flare for quite some time. And I think I am back on my flare kick. So let me know if you guys are still into flare, whether it's epoxy or these metal type badges. I'd love to know in the comments down below what you guys think. So to create this cluster, I'm going to use a tag as a base and then pair it with label, an ephemera piece, and then that flare. Now I also did build a cluster on the left hand side using a We Are Memory Keepers journaling label and then a Heidi Swap ticket ephemera piece and then a phrase sticker because sometimes just a simple phrase sticker can just complete a little cluster like that. But as I go through my supplies I am looking for some more hints of gold and red because that's the main color scheme here. Maybe a little bit of blue if I could manage. But what I do end up finding are my Heidi Swap clear stickers, which I've been trying to use because they're sort of a product focus for me at the moment. Even though they're not in my kit, I'm just trying to use up some of my new supplies while also using up some of my older supplies. So I pulled out that Heidi Swap clear sticker sheet and pulled out the arrow off of it. And I'll also pull out another one here that says that rocked. And guess what? The ice cream did rock. It was delicious. It was way too big, but you guys know theme park food tends to be that way. Then I'm going to add a little teeny tiny bit of twine in the top of this tag, just some black and white twine from my stash. Now I often get my twine from packages, whether it be a small Etsy shop or a scrapbook store that sort of wraps up what they give you in the mail. And I always have twine left over and I always keep it because it's important to reuse when we can. And free twine, who didn't love that? I also come in with a couple of clear stickers which are actually from a Disney collection from the Simple Stories one and just use a couple of the hearts. I really adore clear stickers and I was sort of on a clear sticker kick here. Next up I pull out the stamp set that's in my kit this month and it's from Teresa Collins and it's actually if it's still in stock it's only one dollar over at onlyonelifecreations.com which is a scrapbook store that I use a lot and I end up using this Teresa Collins stamp set quite a few times on this page. So I end up doing five star review at the bottom, which is why I did the little label and then I did the five stars. And then before I stamp more, which I know I wanted to, I wanted to get my title in place to realize how much space it would take up. And this Echo Park sticker sheet is super old, but I did find it somewhere on the internet. So if you guys are interested in checking out all of the products I've used in this video, check out the link down below. Just an old Echo Park 12 by 12 sticker sheet I hadn't used and I'm finally getting to using it and here's where I come back in with another star stamp because we have a star theme sort of going on here with the mixed media with the stamp I just did and then with the five star review at the bottom so I thought that was kind of fun and then I'm going to come in with a couple couple other elements now I do switch throughout my kit a lot and again I'll have all the products linked down below in case you guys are interested but I end up adding like a second line to my title. So instead of old school as just my title, I end up going with old school solo trip, which I think is super fun because I think we often forget to do things by ourselves sometimes. And I'm really, really glad I did that and had so much fun. And, you know, single rider lines were great. You know, all of the things that you don't really think about if you do go alone to a theme park. But it'll be quite some time before I get back there. But I'm hopeful that things will get back to normal next year and that things are a little bit safer out there. But to finish off this layout, I end up pulling out these red rhinestone. Well, they're not rhinestones. They're more of just like pearl gems and they're not a perfect red mesh. They're a little bit darker, but I think they add a perfect finishing touch. 
But I hope you guys enjoyed everything that happened on this layout. I know there's a lot going on, but again, I'll have all the products linked down below. I'll have my playlisting linked down below in case you guys want to check them out. And here's a close-up on that mixed media and the rest of the page. Crafty Maggie's channel will be linked down below so you guys can check out her awesome work. But let me know what you guys think of this page and that mixed media. I'd love to know in the comments down below. I'll also have some resources down below in case you guys are interested in making sure you have a plan to vote and a backup plan to vote and some other educational resources if you're interested. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Bye guys.